welcome to Application, the Typo 3 Community Podcast. One, two. Welcome to Application, the Typo 3 Community Podcast. I'm Jeffrey A. McGuire. You can call me Jam. And this is where we celebrate the Typo 3 community, sharing your stories, talking about your projects and the difference you make in, around, and with Typo 3 CMS. Today on Application, the Typo 3 Community Podcast, I talk with Louisa Fassbender about her path from student to intern to agency job to Typo 3 Community Marketing Lead, and how the pandemic of 2020 helped kick off her master's degree. We discuss helping clients making good decisions and building trust, the cycle of inspiration, and Louisa's favorite thing about Typo 3. Hint, it's all about the structure for her. I hope you enjoy this episode at least as much as I enjoyed speaking with Louisa to put it together. How are you? I'm good. How about you? You in the office in Düsseldorf? Yeah. Mondays, mm. Thursdays are my office days since okay. June or something. And where are you? Are you at the WeWork space? Or? I, I am actually. Yep. I think I um I think I filled you in on what we're doing here, but uh, the association was kind enough to um be interested in having a Typo 3 podcast. And I think for myself that it goes um, pretty well with the sort of activities you're doing and the sort of things that uh, that we care about in this open source community. And um, my interest is sharing the stories behind this, this technology and this community and this project. And um, I'm really interested in, in what it does and what the value it is that it delivers to people, of course, but I'm also um, really keen to, um, to to introduce some people to the community and have this as another way that people can learn about what's going on in the in the whole in the whole ecosystem. And um, you were very high up on my list. Thank you for accepting. Thanks for inviting me. I have not got an official tagline or intro spiel or anything yet, but this is the probably official Typo 3 podcast. And today I am speaking with Louisa Fassbender. Louisa Fassbender comes from the border between Holland and Germany and works at a little Typo 3 company in Dusseldorf called... Marketing Factory Consulting GmbH. Marketing Factory Consulting, GmbH. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? What do you do privately, personally, and what do you do professionally? Uh, well, yeah, let's start with the professional part. Um, I've been working at Marketing Factory as a project assistant for three years doing my dual studies for my bachelor's degree. Then I converted to a full-time job and I've been here ever since for two years now, and now I've just started my master's degree in marketing and communications on the side. So I do a full-time job during the week and then an evening and Saturday study master thesis type additionally. Um, wow, congratulations. I, Were you, um, did, you need, did you need a hobby? Is that, uh, um, you had, did you have too much time kinda. on your hands? <laughs> yeah, due to Corona, I, I wanted to start my master's degree last year. Um, but then like things came up and I just didn't really feel like doing it. And I felt overwhelmed concerning like there was so many parties going on and you were always trying to meet your friends and that's all gone. So yeah, I basically needed a hobby and I thought like, why not start now? <laughs> oh, how interesting. Wait a minute. So I'm going to pull that apart for a second. You, you wanted to continue your education in this way, but y- you're so pop, your social life felt like too much to like it was getting in the way. And so the 2020 pandemic is, is, is actually got a silver lining for you. Yeah. Cause I I was thinking about what I could do in my free time if I'm stuck at home. So yeah, I thought about maybe learning a new language, but then I thought like, if you don't start your master's degree now, I'm not going to start when I'm 30. So yeah, that's what I'm doing now. (laughs) And I mean, New languages are fine, and we have lots of global communication channels now, but a lot of people like to learn new languages because they want to travel, right? And travel is not 
something I want to think about right now still. Yeah, um, probably not for a couple of months. So Right. Whenever you're listening to this podcast, dear listeners, watchers, readers, we are speaking in October 2020 in real time. And we're both based in Germany and things are okay here. Although I happen to know that Louisa uh, uh, lives in one of the hardest hit parts of the country. Um, but things are things are tricky and there's not a lot of places that we can go easily. So it's, yes, it's, um, it's a very strange time. Right, but I believe I interrupted you. So you spent three years on a internship working sort of combination. In Germany, this dual study is really interesting. People can, can be paid professionals and study at the same time. And now you've been working full time two years and now are you still working f- you said you're working full time while you're doing your masters. Yeah, it's five days a week of working at the office or at home, whatever is like it depends on the day. Like as I said, Mondays and Thursdays I'm usually in Düsseldorf and the other three days I'm at home. And then I have classes on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays and Saturdays. So online. Online. Yeah, most of the time. If we're less than fifty people, it's on site, but it's also in Düsseldorf. But that happened like two times so far. So, what are you going into in your masters? Uh, it's marketing and communications. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Pretty fitting with my role at the Type Three Association as well. Right. I want to touch on that for sure. Uh, what is it that you do at your company nowadays, and how do you? What does that have to do with Type Three? Um, I'm still working as a project manager, so I am taking care of clients' needs and requests and I'm forwarding them either to our developers, I'm writing offers, I'm writing invoices, I'm creating concepts, and we are mostly working with Typo3 as our CMS of choice. So that's how I got into Typo3 in the first place. Um, We do work with WordPress and Symfony. Besides that, in other projects, it depends on what the different um, requirements are, but mostly we do Typo3. Sure. I mean, every project has a has a more appropriate set of tools and a less appropriate set of tools, and there are plenty of choices out there. And how you help your clients, I think, and how you do best for your company, you must know quite a lot about Typo3 itself and getting it implemented to be able to make an effective offer and promise timelines and such. And I, I believe you're also a certified Typo3 integrator. Is that right? Uh, Not yet. I'm working on it. Uh, So far, I'm just an editor and a consultant, but I want to get more into the technical stuff. So I'm working on that as well. Okay. So um, Typo3 certification in in this community is something that I really want to explore in the with other guests on the podcast. But you've got two of the you've got two of the possible uh, four certifications: editor, integrator, developer, and consultant. You certainly know your way around a Typo3 installation and and uh, have an idea about the scope of when I ask for something, you tell me I'm crazy and that'll take way too much time and cost way too much money. Yeah, and again, it should always be your goal as a project manager in Typo3 to know more about the project, the customer's project than the customer itself. Because it's not really professional if someone calls and it's like, oh, it doesn't work. And you're just like, yeah, I can see that it doesn't work. And that's like all you can <laughs> offer them. Just, yeah. Was your discovery of Typo3 also your first introduction to open source? Yeah, it was. I didn't plan on going into the tech or IT sector at all before. So that might be interesting. And what happened? I, I actually wanted to go into the um, like fashion sector because my mom's a fashion designer. And I worked at a um, wedding dress store for three years besides my uh, high school. But then I learned about how hard the fashion sector is and that it's pretty bitchy and you probably don't have a lot of chances if you don't have a lot of money there. So yeah, I kind of stumbled upon marketing factory without Mm -hmm. any deeper thoughts. And that's how I got in. That's how I first learned about open source, to be honest. I never knew about that before. Hmm. So as they say in Germany, learning by doing. Yeah, definitely. And do you have a first memory of uh learning about open source and these concepts was there was there a moment where you're like whoa you know it's free or how do you make money or was there a was there a culture shock there at any point definitely because like if you don't know anything about cmss or like open source in general the concept of 
having a free software that's supported by a lot of people who do it in their free time or who just enjoy making the product better uh, is really weird. And I remember mm -hmm. I started here in September and there's the Type of 3 camp in Rhein-Ruhr in Essen in November each year. And they invited me to come, but I didn't because I was like, kind of scared because I was 19, like, you know, that I don't know. Um, and they were just talking about, oh, there are so many enthusiasts and they, this guy just did a new extension and he presented about that. And the concept of that was so far out of my scope that I didn't really know what to think of it. And I actually just started learning about what open source actually means and what the community part means when I went to my first type of three camp, which was a year later. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. So. Okay, so you found your feet and and got used to the geeks in the office before you you before <laughs> yeah. you went out into the community. But nowadays, um, nowadays you're right in the middle of con contributing and um, giving presentations yourself, right? Yeah, correct. I actually did my first three presentations this year, also thanks to Corona, probably, because um, they were all online. Um, yeah, and I just really like giving presentations, which is weird because I used to hate giving presentations in high school or even during my bachelor degree. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, but somehow I really enjoy it. So I would like to continue doing that. <laughs> and what's the what's the motivation? What is it that you enjoy about it? I love when I meet new people and I love talking about things that really interest me and that motivate me. And it's even more... But how do I tell, say that? Um, I love seeing that people are motivated by what I am doing and what the marketing team, for example, is doing. Because I get lots of good feedback and that motivates me to do better. And then that's like a cycle that repeats. So nice. That's probably the best part. So a cycle of inspiration, maybe. Yeah. Because yeah. now I really understand the slogan, inspiring people to share. Because in the beginning, I didn't think I could contribute anything that would inspire anyone for anything. Typo3 is not the only open source project I'm involved in. I've always felt that this open source community experience, I, I really enjoyed your explanation now, because I think that going to the events or writing blog posts, there's this idea that, oh, oh my, oh, I had this terrible problem and I fixed it now, and let me show you what I did so that you don't have to go through that. And there's this, that generosity of ideas beyond any anything about clients or money or being a professional or a developer or not. It's this idea of, of let me show you this cool thing that I found, you know? I really, I really love that feeling. I really, yep, really do. Me too. And um, you just immediately feel included, like there was no point where I came into a room and felt left out, which was also something I didn't expect. Terrific. Yeah. Yeah. I had uh, I had very early open source experiences in communities that were quote unquote developers only, and that was uh, I think that was uncomfortable at the time. But I think the whole thing has come a long way since then. I think especially a CMS community that has reached a certain size because the CMS itself is very much on the on the public end of software, right? It's the stuff that everybody interacts with because it makes websites. Because there's so much there that's to be sort of seen and touched and understood that there's a, it's quite easy to understand that in the end, you need a lawyer and a business person and a designer and a developer and all these other skill sets. And I think that that, that came a long way. Um, and not every community gets that it's, uh, still, which is, which is also kind of weird. When was your first contact with any kind of open source community? 2005. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, 2005. I started building websites in 2006. And with, uh, uh, with well, Drupal. Okay. To be fair, I started building websites with pure HTML and CSS, and then with PHP placeholders and then with content management systems and um, because of my circle of friends and so on i use drupal and drupal's another community that i that i'm still involved in in another system that has um, a strength of its own although it's sort of in competition with typo3 there is so much more web out there and so much more digital stuff out there that i don't think that um i don't think that anybody has to you know steal things from each other when we can go and help help so many people. It, by sometime in 2007, I think I was working full-time with 
open source software to make my living. And by 2008, I'd actually gotten a job at a startup. So, and um, the rest has been a lot of, um, yeah, a lot. <laughs> so what's the coolest thing you've ever done with Typo3 so far? The coolest thing is mm -hmm. probably we did a completely new site for an existing customer, which they had a Typo3 installation before, which was based on, I think, 7.6. And it was like at least 12 years old. And I got the project from my boss to take care of it. And they wanted to do a complete relaunch. So um, Typo 3 version 9, because it was done last year. And yeah, we were thinking about if we would like to do an upgrade. So an upgrade path and migrating contents and whatever. But I was actually able to convince them to just start on a new basics uh, basis, because they had like this huge, it's, it's an American company. And they had this huge customer structure, which was so outdated. Like I think 80% of the customers in the database were outdated. Um, uh -huh. And yeah, we were actually able to convince them to start fresh. And nice. we did a completely new concept and completely built the whole customer management structure new. So that was really cool. Nice. So it's now, sounds... it's, now, it's now a document database and a customer administration database, which can be used completely in the front end. So no administrators need to go into the back end anymore, which was the part that confused them the most in the old one. Oh, I guess it gives you some more security and stability on the whole thing as well. Probably. Yeah, because it was always like, I had the back end was really slow because there were like, I don't know, 20,000 customers in the back end and they all needed to be in a certain folder and they needed to have like three different oh. elements oh. created. It was, it was really something. So oh, wow. we've just cut that all out. So now it's actually, pretty quick and yeah we don't need backend accesses anymore which is also really important because there are lots of like important documents which shouldn't be seen by everyone so now everyone right. just sees with the contents he is allowed to see nice that so sounds that's cool. cool and it's for an american company uh yeah it's um, actually a multinational company but they have their headquarters in minnesota Nice. If you don't have a case study out there about that, it would be really great to do a case study because I think that more people in more parts of the world should know about Typo3 as an option for enterprise uh, applications and websites. And one of the things that Typo3 is great for is information dense, information rich websites. And I, my, my personal view of Typo 3's sort of design ethos and history and design concept is that it's come from agencies and it's built by agencies for agencies. So agencies with Typo 3 have this tool set for building large client websites well and then customizing them where they need. So large catalogs of information, large hierarchical data structures, all those sorts of things end up working really, really well in the system. And it sounds like you got yeah. to do a project that proves me right. <laughs> it was actually a really cool project. If like the first briefing was like, oh, we just need to redesign it a little bit. And then we need to do from CSC to FSC and whatever. Yeah. And that would have been such, such a big amount of work that actually starting fresh and just cutting everything out and just putting in the information, the documents and the customers they actually need uh, was even cheaper than if we would have tried to upgrade it like through oh. two different versions. Right. Interesting. Yeah. So, so it was like a win-win for everyone. We didn't have to deal with the old data and they didn't have to spend like 20,000 euros more. And, and dealing with clients, when you tell them the thing that you asked for that you think you want, we can do that for, you know, 100 money. And they'd be like, yes, fine, we'll sign that contract. Say, actually, I have this other option and it'll get you a better result for 75 money instead. It's a real trust builder, right? Yeah, definitely. We actually run into that quite a lot because our, like the people we speak to in the different companies we work for aren't always the most tech savvy people. And they are just like the speaking path to, oh, just tell the agency to do it. So if they send us some kind of requirement and we, we, I don't know, we look over it and we see that it doesn't make sense at all, they are actually really happy about our feedback. And then most mm. times we get to speak to the people actually deciding what they want instead of just being this, uh, having this like big line of people telling people to tell people that they have to tell people something. That's actually a trust builder because if we tell them we could do that, but it doesn't make sense or it's going to be unstable, it's going to 
break really easily or it's going to be really expensive and we could do it cheaper. That's definitely something the customers really value in our customer management or customer agency relationship. That also comes back to, I know we're on the official type of three podcast insert like slogan here. Um, <laughs> but still, if a customer comes to us and he wants a block or something, we actually, uh, we, we definitely tell him you should probably use WordPress for that. So we are not married to typo three because for some projects typo three just isn't the right CMS, but vice versa. Also WordPress does work for other things. So that's also important. What about when you have a client who already has an existing typo three instance and they want a small site, would you just launch uh, a separate site within a multi-site structure instead of giving them WordPress? Uh, no, actually, we would probably use WordPress for that as well and just give them two separate logins because we've done that in the past as well. We had a client who had like, um, it's like Emo Scout, but for a, uh, for companies. So you could actually okay. look for companies who were being sold. Like a, Interesting. They had that and that was based on Typo 3. And they had their corporate site, which was based on Typo 3. And those ones were in the same installation, but then they also wanted a blog. And it was uh -huh. just, it was a really simple blog with just, I don't know, like 20 different functionalities. Um, and that was actually created in WordPress because it was easier than trying to set up a blog in Typo 3. But it's great not to be dogmatic about those choices, right? Yeah. Um, uh, just because it's, uh, uh, you know, just because we're a type of three agency doesn't mean we only have to sell type of three. That's fair. And then um, because you do Symphony, for example, you can also build custom libraries or specialist applications that integrate into other things too. Correct. But back to typo three, what's your favorite typo three feature? What's your favorite thing that it is or does? I've talked about that quite a few times. Um, my favorite thing about typo three is that it's so structured and I love the especially in the newer versions, the just simple drag and drop options. It's also self-explanatory. You can structure everything just how you want it and you can replace certain things really easily and edit them really easily. If I think about for the WordPress Gutenberg editor, for example, I'm not a fan of that because I think it's really, it's, it's such a pain in the, <clears throat> to, to, I don't know, to edit content in there and to actually see how it would display in the front end, even though it's uh -huh. a, what you see is what you get editor. But yeah, I, I really love the content elements and the content element opportunities in Typo 3. And I love the page tree because it's so easy to navigate through the whole site yeah. without having to click like 20 different tabs open. It's a very nice paradigm as well for the people who have to live and work in the site every day. Um, you know, thinking beyond building a site and, and creating a solution um, and then handing it off. There, there are people, of course, who, who work in the back end and they work on content or, or their customer database or whatever it is. Those people knowing that top to bottom, left to right, or uh, however it is, you know, you know exactly where you are on the site and you can find where you're going and, and what to, um, and that, that can automatically be your menu structure, that can automatically be your URL yeah. structure, that can automatically be your permission structure. It's really, really helpful. It's a really useful set of, uh, of shortcuts, right, for, for hierarchical organizations. Yeah. Again, also the permissions in the, with the backend user rights are just so easy to configure and you can actually configure them really easily and just create different groups with different permissions and you don't have to worry about, I don't know, um, an intern doing something he's not supposed to do because he just doesn't see it simply. And that's also yeah. something I really like. What's something that most people don't know about Typo3 that you run into mm. that maybe they should know? That it's definitely not just for enterprises because we market like Typo3 markets itself as an enterprise content management system. But as we said before, sometimes it makes sense to just build a smaller site with Typo3 as well. If, for example, you know that the site is going to scale. And I think a lot of people don't know about the variety of extensions and just extension mechanisms there are in Typo3 because basically everything can be connected to Typo3 for by now because of all the standards that have been implemented. Right. And I think lots of people think that WordPress, for example, is better because there are like all these plugins which you can buy. 
but most of the functionalities which WordPress offers in the, I don't know, is it called a plugin store or marketplace, whatever, they they are available for Typo 3 as well as well in the extension repository. So I think the mirror image of that is one of the things that I like. It's been designed by agencies to deliver agency projects as a as a paradigm. It does so much out of the box without many extensions and gives you a really great user experience and a really great base to build on. And you can get quite a long way. It does more than some systems out of the box. The clean APIs and all of the extension mechanisms then let, let you do that last customization however you want it. Yeah, because most of the time, if it's like a standard corporate site, Typo 3 just has everything that uh, an a the company needs. Like you don't have to install a variety of extensions just to get a running site. Yeah. If you use like the bootstrap package, for example, and a simple Typo 3, you can basically create a site within a day. What was your path to doing um, a, a marketing degree? And, and how does that come together with your role as the community marketing lead for Typo 3? Well, I was thinking about which kind of focus I should set my master's degree on for quite a while because I was struggling between IT management, which would have fit my job here better, and marketing and communications, which would have fit the Type of 3 marketing role better. But in the end, I listened to a couple of classes beforehand, and I'm just a lot more enthusiastic about marketing than I am about standard IT management and like architectural architectural things. So yeah, I think what I'm doing at uni now will really benefit me in the long run because I would like to go more into the marketing sector of things anyways. And yeah, yeah. again, uh, IT management would have fit my job at Marketing Factory better because that's more like the technical side of things. But to be honest, I've always been more intrigued and interested in the marketing side. And that's also why I love being the marketing team lead for Type 3 because I just find that whole sector of marketing a lot more interesting than just the technical stuff. I love to have like a mixture of that. Um, so yeah, I can do my day-to-day -day job still five days a week and have all of my technical knowledge here and build it here, but I can still learn about the thing that actually interests me in uni, so. And uh, I think- and there, are, hmm? there are wonderful ways to combine those, having really solid technical knowledge and having knowledge of this industry and then learning how to communicate um, there are there are tremendous opportunities there. Plus, you said that you like to meet new people and and know what they're about. So um, that's more of a marketing style job than a than an yeah. IT management job. I in, mm -hmm. I imagine. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's so, like a nice mixture of things because here I only I also do like some slide coding changes and stuff like that. I talked about that at the online community event with my colleague actually, but still I'm more interested in the like social side of things. So. I think marketing just fits me better than IT management. So that's why I chose it. At your company, is there is there official opportunity to contribute and be part of the community? How does that how's the approach to being in the community work there? Pretty much everyone's encouraged to do it because a lot of folks in our community uh, in our company actually do contribute in some way or another. I maybe do it a little bit more openly and more publicly than others, but we have a lot of extensions which we maintain and like all of them are in there. Um, we have Simon who's in the dashboard or who, who was in the dashboard initiative before it got merged into core. And then like Ingo is also in the BCC. And yeah, if you would like to contribute to Type of 3 in any kind of way, you're free to do it. I have seen Ingo at a lot of community events and he's participated in some of the community marketing sprints that I've been at over the years too. Yeah. Contribution is kind of encouraged. You were at the company a year before you had the had the the you found the strength to meet the community and how did you end up being the community marketing lead well that's actually thanks to you somehow because <laughs> uh -oh. i think you were, you were the one who invited me to the first marketing sprint which i attended that was very nice of me <laughs> yeah that was really nice of you <laughs> <laughs> yeah my, my first marketing sprint was in december of 2018 in venlo and i think you were the one who invited me to come there and then I just really loved it and I was really passionate about it. And now I kind of lead it or I try to lead it as best as I can. What does that look like? The What does the marketing team get up to? 
Uh, let's uh, let's start with the basics. We try to do, or we try to do all of the release communications for version ten, which was not too successful because we didn't really have the who's responsible for what down yet in all community, and especially in combination with the type of new GmbH, because like the marketing team kind of is linked to the GmbH as well. So that was weird, knowing who's responsible for what and who's able mm. to decide what. Um, but besides that, we now did a lot of analysis because we wanted to be able to see where we're at just to be able to start out somehow because before it was kind of like, let's do this, oh, well, then let's do that. And we were just hopping around. So we did a competitor analysis and now we're trying to, oh, no, we're trying, we're building battle cards. So actual comp competitor comparisons because they were really highly asked for in our surveys, which we did. Nice. Uh, just to enable decision makers to actually be able to factually based, make factual based decisions, whether they want to choose Drupal or Type 3, for example. Um, we did a, an SAO analysis, and we're still trying to get all of those results. We were working on creating more international um, or national uh, landing pages to enable more people from outside the Germany, Austria, and Switzerland region to reach type of three, uh, the reach of the type of three community in any kind of way. We were trying to reach out to people outside of Europe all in all. So we have yes. Paul on the team now who's from North America and we're trying to get more into the North American market there. Cause mm -hmm. as we all know, type of three is basically not known in the USA whatsoever. It's basically- You know, it was, um, it was on its, um, quite a few years ago now, it was on its way and it was growing. And then um, there was the there was the difficult time in the community around uh, not releasing not releasing version five, and that turned into Neos and all of that split. Mm -hmm. And then things came back together since version six, seven. Um, you know, the the Typo three ecosystem is really um, professionalized and and adopted all the standards that you were talking about earlier. And um, yeah, and I I really share the uh the goal of getting the word out in more places and i'm really excited that there have been a couple of sprints in india for example yeah and that um a couple of governments in africa actually use typo 3 and there's been some community outreach to help them um upgrade and maintain their infrastructure and i think it's a an exciting an exciting time for that and um i think that in my different places that i engage with the uh, typo 3 as a project and as a community i think that's that's maybe the the unifying theme is to that I'd like the word to go out further. Yeah, and that also goes hand in hand with the mentorship program because we are not trying to reach potential customers overseas, but we are also trying to just get people to use Typo Three and mm -hmm. to also be able to build their own careers about like on Typo Three. So that's also something I'm really excited to see what comes out of that because I think it started a month ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. And there's people from like 12 different countries who are now being mentored by people from the Type of 3 community, which help them learn about the basics of Type of 3 so that they can spread the word in their areas. Are I you involved really in that cool. or just ob observing it? I'm just an observer and I like to talk about it. <laughs> Building advocacy, the best way that you can possibly do that is help someone make their life better and then they'll yeah. automatically be excited about, about how they got there. Yeah, and if they're excited about it, they're going to tell people in their area about it, and that's going to spread the word more like naturally than us trying to force the type of three hat on someone. Right. Better if someone takes it and goes with it. I would like to know what your favorite open source project is. My favorite open source project is type of three, but I think that's also because I'm so deeply linked into it as of now, and I didn't really get the chance to touch into any other open source community. So right. I might be a little bit biased, but from what okay. I can observe, I really like the type of three community and I really like the project as well. So it's a totally fair answer. I mean, everybody's experience is their experience. Yeah. I have a little uh, segment in the podcast that I'm calling suggest a guest. And I would like you to suggest who else should be on here a little bit like the ice bucket challenge, but all you have to do is tell me who I should invite on here, um, what would make them an interesting guest, you know, why they're interesting, what what they're about. Uh, yeah, um, that's all. And like, I think 
three maybe. Three maybe. Okay. Um, they're probably all on your list already anyways, but still. My number one would still be Oliver Barge. I think I told you about him before because I think he's one of the newer faces in Type 3 as well. He has been pretty active before, but he now joined Benny's, uh, Benny's company and he's really actively contributing to the Type 3 core. And he actually wanted to contribute more and that's why he changed his job. So I think it would be really interesting to, to talk to another young folk in the community who's also really motivated <laughs> about Type 3. Yeah, let's be honest. Most most of the people in the Type Three community are in twenty four. <laughs> it, it it's true, it's true, and um, the fact that there a few younger faces are showing up um, is actually a great sign for the interestingness and the vitality of of the community. So, yeah. Oli Bach, got it. Yeah, obviously uh, Matthias Bodlesniak, because he's the one who's also pushing the. Type of three mentorship program and he's just basically whatever happens somewhere in the community he's there and he al always knows about everything and always has so many great new ideas and i just really love how his spirit and how he goes about things and he's really enthusiastic about type three so i think he's you're probably going to talk to him anyways no, am i right I, I, he's a very good friend of mine and um and um he's also on the type of three association board and yes he's he's happily has a place on my list. Mm, and I think another one would be Rachel, because she just newly joined the board. And I think it would be really interesting to get her perspective, because she has lots of cool new ideas, and she actually really wants to drive things forward. And I think she would also be a really good addition to your podcast series. Now, Raquel Foucault, right? Oh, it's not Rachel. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's OK. Um, um, Raquel Foucault is a very interesting and very articulate person who really does have uh, some some strong ideas and um, you know she's a, a powerful woman in technology doing a technical job and all of that and she and I talked for more than an hour just last week for the podcast so oh. your wish <laughs> is my command Louisa you get <laughs> You get a free fourth, um, a free fourth uh, 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 choice if you'd like. Okay. If uh, I don't think a lot of people know him because he's my colleague, but I think Christian Spo would be really interesting because uh -huh. he's actually a PHP developer and he just did his first Type of Three project within our company. And I think that would also be really interesting to see what he might have to add about that because he's really into the open source part and he's also really engaged in the php community so that might be a more technical standpoint maybe right and i'd love to get his perspective of uh, being a being a php dev and coming into working with typo3 and he's got a fresh perspective on 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 it without too much old baggage or or such that sounds like a great interview that sounds great yeah. i will hit you up for his contact information thank you so very <laughs> much Okay, so this was uh, Louisa Fassbender. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. Thank you so much to, for your contributions to the community and your uh, take on combining technical and non-technical uh, activities to be a part of, of something bigger than all of us. Thank you Thanks. so very much. Good luck with your studies. And it's 2020 right now, so I don't know when I will see you in person, but I hope it's not too long from now. Yeah, same. <laughs> thank All you right. for the chance to be on here and thank you for your time. Great. Thanks, Louisa. Have a nice day. You too. Bye. Thanks to the Typo3 Association for sponsoring this podcast. Thank you, B13 and Stephanie Kreutzer, for our logo. Merci beaucoup, Patrick Gaumont, Typo3 developer and musician extraordinaire, for our theme music. Thanks again to today's guest. If you liked what you heard, don't forget to subscribe in the podcast app of your choice and share Application, the Typo3 Community Podcast, with your friends and colleagues. If you didn't like it, please share it with your enemies. Would you like to play along and suggest a guest for the podcast? Do you have questions or comments? Reach out to us on Twitter at Typo3Podcast. You can find show notes, links, and more information in our posts on Typo3.org. Remember, open source software would not be what it is without you. Thank you all for your contributions.
I think you're stuck. <laughs> Hello. Hey. <laughs> that was my side, apparently. Yeah, awesome. my, mine was working. <laughs> you were kind of stuck in between. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I don't want to say anything, but you're oh, stuck again. It? Yeah. And it's wow. always like the most unfluttering faces. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of exciting. I wonder why it is. What's one thing that people would enjoy learning about you? Well, I don't know. What would you enjoy learning about me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. 